Hey everyone, and welcome again to my audio-visual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel, and I'm a draftsman, and today I am talking to you about the eighth of Dennis Dutton's cluster criteria for, criteria for art. I'm going to read the corresponding excerpt, and then I will muse about it a little bit. If you'd like to support my audio-visual channel, you can do so by liking and sharing this video, and also by subscribing. These are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to support what I do with money, it's also very welcome and appreciated. You can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, which is gabriellahandle.com, just one word. You can purchase crafts I make from eBay, you can buy prints of my drawings, or you can leave me a tip. The links for all of these will be in the caption. Thank you for your time and attention, and let's get on with it. Um, uh, as you probably have heard in the several last recordings I've made of the podcast and of these, this series, there's a stupid contract construction that has been going on for just I don't even know how long. Um, and if you hear the construction guys saying something or screaming something, let me know what you think they're saying because I want to know. I don't understand what they're saying. I just hear kind of weird vocalizations and yeah, just tell me what you think they're saying, okay? Um, okay. So, we're gonna read cluster criteria for art number eight out of Dennis Sutton's The Art Instinct in this chapter, What is Art? And this one is called Expressive Individuality. As usual, let's review first all of the criteria. Number one is direct pleasure. Number two, skill and virtuosity. Number three, style. Number four, novelty and creativity. Number five, criticism. Number six, representation. Number seven, special focus. Number eight, expressive individuality. Number nine, emotional saturation. Number 10, intellectual challenge. Number 11, art traditions and institutions. Number 12, imaginative experience. Okay, that's the review. And let's read then number eight, expressive individuality. Quote, expressive individuality. The potential to express individual personality is generally latent in, in art practices, whether or not it is fully achieved. Where a productive activity has defined output, like double entry, bookkeeping, or filling teeth, there is little room and no demand for individual expression. Where what counts as achievement in a productive activity is vague and open-ended, as in the arts, the demand for expressive individuality seems inevitably to arise. Even in cultures that produce what might seem to outsiders to be less, less personalized arts, Individuality, as opposed to competent execution, can be a focus of attention and evaluation. The claim that artistic individuality is a Western construct not found in non-Western and tribal cultures has been widely accept accepted and is certainly false. In New Guinea, for example, traditional cravings were unsigned. This is hardly surprising in a non-literate culture of small settlements where social interactions are large, largely face-to-face. Everyone knows who the most esteemed and talented carvers are and knows their works without marks of authorship. Individual talent and expressive personality in respected New Guinea is respected in New Guinea as elsewhere. In, in parenthesis, any ordinary activity with a creative component, everyday speech, lecturing, home hospitality, laying out the company newsletter, opens the possibility for expressive individuality. The general interest in individuality in ordinary life seems less about the contemplation of expression than about knowing the quality of mind that produced the, ex the expression. End parenthesis and also end quote. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. 
so I have been listening to videos that arguably I should not have been listening to because they make me angry. So the first thing that I had an urge to comment about was this thing about the claim that artistic individuality and is a Western construct and not found in non-Western and tribal cultures has been widely accepted and is certainly false. Um, and yeah, that's uh, something that I really like but also made me angry <laughs> reading this book. That's, um, he kind of goes more into that in, oh right, the, I think it's the next chapter. It's an entire chapter called, it's chapter four, called But They Don't Have Our Concept of Art. And throughout the entire chapter, he has different examples of things that scholars quotes, you know, in quotes or whoever has said, that, oh yeah, they don't have the art concept of Western art because of this or that. Um, and I know that I'm going on a tangent, but just give me a minute. Um, I want to rant about it, okay? Um, and I find that extra irritating because I myself have heard that just so many times and I really fucking hate that argument or just the proposal even though obviously everyone can say whatever they want all right fine but I still think it's fucking stupid and I think it's fucking stupid and, and I find it really irritating because it removes the humanity out of art in the sense that it's insinuating that only some humans do art, and that is a lie. It is so ignorant, it's just stupid to say. Um, so in the chapter, which again is the following, is the following chapter, but they don't have our concept of art, you know, um, Dutton includes generous excerpts of the essays of these individuals who argue that they don't have our concept of art, and why they think that. And then he and, and then in the excerpt itself is like I could read evidence that they do have the concept of art. And then Dennis Dutton just kind of like remarks the point by providing quote unquote Western examples. Um, I just really I just I find it so irritating when somebody does that thing to separate groups of people and it's so condescending it's like really condescending I just find it so condescending I mean you're gonna have to read it yourself if you want to go more into that or I guess I could review that myself but then it's gonna be just unmitigated ranting and I I don't know if I want to do that um, so even though that chapter they don't have our concept of art made me angry because those people are out there just saying this crap. I'm, you know, I'm glad that I was able to have the opposite um, really well supported by Dutton's entire chapter. Uh, Alright, so I guess I can let it go there. Uh, this expressive individu individuality also makes me think of style, as I guess I think of it. Um, I wonder why there's this discrepancy in the definition of style, or, I mean, I guess I haven't defined it, and neither has uh, Dutton, for that matter. Um, he's kind of just, like, described it. Looking at the time, you guys. Um, so... This expressive individuality that he is referring to, which I'm thinking of as style, it reminds me again of the example of the handwriting. And it also reminds me of how style basically forms. So both handwriting and, you know, like an artistic style, both form by first repeating and copying, you know, being taught, and doing something a lot of times until you get really familiar with those, with that foundation. And then after you have iterated enough times, and not deliberately necessarily, you will start doing little things that will then differentiate what you're doing, or you know, will individuate what you're doing from the place you started. Um, 
So, you know, if you have a letter O, for example, like the cursive O, you know, that it has like the, these two loops overlapping, you know, as you practice your uh, cursive, you might make that smaller loop really, really small and keep it on top, for example, or make it really big, you know, something like that. Um, or your O's might be taller or they might be like shorter, you know, like very rounded, for example, like among many, many, many variables that there can be um, present in cursive. Um, so I think that's what he is referring to with, it, with this expressive individuality. Um, and I kind of disagree with this about where a productive activity has a defined output, like double entry bookkeeping or filling teeth. There is little room or no demand for individual expression. I am kind of inclined to disagree with that based on a gush that I did for Michael Klein's episode when we were talking about a dentist guy. Um, and well, the define the, the output is defined because for the example that I talked about was my husband getting his wisdom tooth removed. So like that's the demi the, the defined output. It's like no matter what um, dentist he would have gone to, that's what he needed done. Um, so then that's definitely different in the case uh, compared with art because in the case of art, the defined output is a work of drawing or painting a work of art. And that, of course, can can be whatever the artist determines. However, I think the expressive individuality in the case of a work of art um, continues into the output, whereas in the other example of the removal of teeth, <clears throat> it's limited to kind of like the path to get into the output. And that doesn't necessarily make like tooth removal on art, but some people would say it does. And um, I don't think that's strictly wrong, even though it isn't, you know, visual art, the art that we are discussing here, but it's still, I think it's still something about the person doing the tooth removal, in the case of the example, um, being deliberate about their craft and thoughtful and wanting to always practice and always polish their procedure and have each iteration be as good as possible and this type of stuff. Um, those things are definitely applicable or at least are definitely applicable to when I make drawings. Uh, you know, it's, it's considered, it's like it's, 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 It's a thoughtful drawing, and I want it to look in just a way, um, this type of stuff. And it's not done until it looks in that way. And, you know, if I'm drawing a flower, you know, you could argue that that's uh, an open-ended thing, because if you tell two artists, draw a flower, and then whatever's going to be the outcome is going to be unknown until you see the result. Um, I guess that's the difference with a defined output, with other things that are not art. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess I went off kind of thinking of using the term art in relationship to a dentist or what other examples are, are here. Um, oh, like bookkeeping or filling teeth. Um, because I have complained in episodes of my podcast, A Conversation About Art, about how people want to usurp the term art because we humans know that the term art and art itself is important. However, I feel like when somebody refers to somebody pulling teeth or somebody doing bookkeeping, um, it's like they have, they have it down to an art. You know, some, something of this, like I've heard that expression. I mean, maybe you have as well. Um, I think in that case, what somebody is saying is that 
this activity the person does has been so polished upon each iteration that you know they're kind of trying to bring up what they're doing and make it extra important by attaching the name art to it. Um, and wow, I have ranted tangentially about stuff a lot for this one, I guess. Or maybe not. I don't know. What do you think? Um, uh, well, yeah, so then in, in this uh, example just now, using the term art, um, it's to kind of say that the activity is important when they say, wow, they're, you know, this dentist guy that I was talking about in the Michael Klein episode is an artist. He's clearly an artist. He's a maestro, you know, uh, whereas the other way that I've complained about in very many episodes about how people use the term art just indiscriminately is to belittle art, I think, um, because by saying that anything can be art, you are belitt belittling art because there's just then nothing is art, kind of, you know. I have to think about that more so that I can uh, talk about the person when I complain about it. Um, I did talk about it in a previous episode of, uh, of, of these, um, this series, where Jordan Peterson talks about value and about how it's physically impossible for everything to have the same value because like each person makes their own hierarchy of stuff, of the value of stuff. So, no, not everyone and not everything has the same value for a person because value is ascribed according to whatever it is by the person, the viewer, whomever it is. So then that same dissertion of like separating this, I like this, I don't like this, I like that person, I don't like that person, whatever the reasons are, that is also applicable to art. Um, and that is why, no, not everything is art, because it can't be. Because then the term wouldn't exist, because it would be pointless. Um, I don't have to think about that more. So that's a stupid construction. Anyway, um, I think that's going to be it for today. And so we're at 8 out of 12 plus your criteria. Is there any criteria that has called your attention more than another criteria for whatever reason? Any one in particular that resounds more true or a group of them or just all of them so far? Um, yeah, let me know what you think. You heard the guys just saying stuff just now in the construction. Tell me what they said because I don't know. I just hear like vowels. Um, thank you very much for watching and listening and reading if you're watching this on mute because this will have subtitles. Uh, thanks again and have a fantastic day.